Hey Pete, it's Dick Bramer with the Minnesota Twins and your friends at the No Time for a Podcast group wanted me to wish you a very happy 45th birthday. And I wanted to wait until I got on the road because I know you take great pride in going uh, and seeing the Twins in the visiting city. So here I am in St. Petersburg getting ready for the opening game between the Twins and the Rays. So I wanted to wish you a very happy 45th birthday. And I know you're a great Twins fan, so I hope you're as eager as I am about what we've seen so far from the Twins and what that might mean for the 2022 season. So I hope you had a great birthday, and if you come to Target Field sometime, look me up. I'll be right behind home plate. Hope you had a great 45th birthday. We cut the hard line. There's no time. You're going to have to get to another exit. He's got a keys around here. No time for love, Dr. Jones. No time for... No time for podcast. <laughs> uh, no, I can't be bothered with that. I have no time for that sort of nonsense. never quite know if it's the right link till someone else like pops in it's like waiting waiting well yeah that's the right one <laughs> or you're both in the wrong one shadow man's back it's the are you is he the night man fighting the day man you gotta pay the toll for this boys <laughs> <laughs> is that oh. how gonna start apparently <laughs> anyway <laughs> anyway hey back. it's a musical it's related no all right, you want me to start this? You want me to, to go? Start this party off. All right, uh, welcome to uh, No Time for uh, Podcasts. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Dick Bremer says it's the No Time for a Podcast group. I don't know if we want to change the name, but go ahead. Welcome to No Time for a Podcast. Uh, we're talking about music and concerts tonight. Uh, Peter Martin apparently thinks hairball is a thing. It's not, um, but we'll, we'll we'll talk about it. You know, we'll get we'll get to it. So thanks for uh, listening in tonight. And we're here with Peter Martin and old man. Oh, old man. oh yeah, yeah. Peter talk Martin and old man. Yourself in the third person. Is there a point where you become older man? Uh, no, it was, it was older. There's older version, uh, older Kinsella's out there. I can't be the older man. Hmm. All right, maybe I disagree, but it wasn't a nickname I gave myself, so I assume. Of, it could just be thrust upon me. <laughs> so if you want to start calling me the older man, that's fine. Is it? Is it? Was Peter was old man? Was that you or me that gave him that name? Was that? Yes. I think it's you. I don't know. It was. I think it might have been a collective. Uh, collective vibe between the two of us. Yes. That wow. That dude's kind of cranky for being twenty. <laughs> <laughs> kind of like an old man. I mean, I still, I still do remember the first time uh, I hung out with you was when Jeffrey was going to get uh, beer for the uh he was going with bill to get beer for the, the the dorm and i had to wait with you like by this vent oh yeah over by like moose tower somewhere yeah moose tower I mean, you and i you <laughs> and i just stood there and we were just like we don't know each other and we're just both like uh hey yeah like who are you yeah uh cool we're just we're just standing here waiting for the point where we can start drinking yeah just please hold while we wait around on this vent <laughs> With this hot air blowing up my pants. Yes, yes. It was that, 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 that huge vent. I always remember that that that's my one of the memories I have with you the first time vent. Yeah. Oh, good times. Good times. Good times. Very special bond. <laughs> <laughs> that's how friendships start, Peter. Mm -hmm. Out in the middle of winter on heating ducts in Minnesota. Yeah. Being left outside in the winter because you're not old enough to go buy beer. Yeah. Never realized you could have just stayed back at the dorm. But you know, with Bill and, and Zamora, there was a chance the beer was never going to make it back if you didn't go with them. That's true. You'll see him. Again. You'll get your <laughs> probably not. <laughs> Will you though? Probably not. You'll see him again. <laughs> you probably have to steal the money back. Yeah. Speaking of beer, what what are people drinking tonight? Um, so I have two cases of spotted cow that I. Um, oh, you that, got more spotted cow. It, yeah, two cases, but uh, they were warm, so I just got them in the fridge. So I I'm. Taking down my last Uda pills. Nice. Yeah, because I don't want to drink a mildly cold, mildly cold uh, spotted cow. You gave me, didn't you get Peter? Didn't you give me that one of those spotted cows <clears throat> when I was there for the holiday last? Like, isn't that? No, I think I gave you the nut brown ale thing. The fat squirrel. The fat squirrel. Oh, that's the one. Yeah. 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 yeah the case I accidentally bought. That, that's what he gives all his, you know, featured guests. Mm -hmm. Holiday yeah. Party. Well, I sell it off. I'm like, ah, you guys, you don't want the spotted cow. It's not really that good or whatever. But have you tried like the the nut brown ale? It's really tasty. <laughs> I'll give you. A no, couple. I mean, 
I remember I remember going to that room in your basement and, and you were there was two fridges and you were like, no, no, let's look in this fridge. Like ta- have a beer out of this fridge. Don't look in the other fridge. Don't look in the other fridge. <laughs> that was a freezer, but okay. <laughs> <laughs> feel like party pizzas. <laughs> you knew how much you like party pizzas. You were going to take some. I'd be lying if I said I didn't have a party pizza in the last month. <laughs> I'll also be lying. What were the I toppings? Said. Just the little pepperoni squares? It was a pepperoni one, yeah. I think I my eldest was pretty pissed because it was the last one with me. Mm. So he was mad I ate that. He felt like he was owed it for some reason. I'm like, well, here's a buck. Go buy two more. <laughs> <laughs> you'll be fine. Yeah, you'll be all right. What are you drinking, Jeremy? Uh, I've got some cider from Keepsake, <clears throat> which is a cidery that is down here in Northfield. Uh, it's a great little, little, they, you know, it's an apple orchard and they have started making, making hard cider and uh, they sell it now. It's, it's actually in liquor stores around and I've seen it at a couple bars, um, but I'm glad, I'm glad for them. Like they're cool. I went there uh, when Sarah and I started dating. Um, we're not together anymore, but when we started dating years ago, we went to Keepsake for like an event there. And I, I love their cider. Like it's it's a great local venue. So I'm just I'm I'm, ad, I'm advertising. <laughs> You're just trying to get people to come down to Northfield. Yeah, it's, yeah. No, it's a cool nope. place. No they one's do. coming down to Northfield. Nobody. No, it's yeah. a great place. Come visit. I'm, if you want olive oil, <laughs> so if y'all. there is an olive oil shop. I don't understand it. I don't understand how it's. You a want a bowl, a few frames. I mean, is there a question about like what it's appropriate? Like, or is it still appropriate as a 45 year old to live in a college town? Well, yeah, I mean, there's other things here. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, you could be a professor. Like two other colleges. <laughs> like two other colleges. I, <laughs> I don't, I don't generally hang out with college students, so it's not that inappropriate, maybe. <laughs> I say generally. I say generally. Generally. Well, I heard that. <laughs> what's, what's more your crowd? The uh, factory workers at the General Mills there? Multimeal, whatever it is. I, no, my crowd is Bartleby. Like that's. <laughs> <laughs> I work. I work and I go home. That's it. Nice. Living the dream. Living the dream. I am having a Surly Havoc machine, and uh, I did not know what it was till I just looked it up. It is a West Coast IPA. It was in a variety pack. What the hell is that? Mean? What's West Coast IPA? It's a certain style IPA. They use certain hops, basically. I don't know. I don't understand the IPA game. There's too many iterations. There's lots of iterations of lagers and stuff, too. I watched sort of like a 90-minute video just on lagers one time. All the different varieties. It's crazy town. I'm just saying, it's a young man's game. Yeah. So it's not bad. It's pretty good. Then on, on deck, I have a uh, pseudo Sue, an old standby. So there you go. Yeah, I should probably put one of my, uh, I got, you know, the little little beer fridge thing next to my desk. But I probably should put a spot of pow in the little freezer area. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just surprised Jeremy doesn't have any fireball in his, in his cider. There, no, there's fireball here. But but the keepsake, I like the keepsake. It's a good... By itself, that's good. Yeah, it'll be good. I right. actually should, what I should do is put a little fireball in another cup next. <laughs> fireball chaser. Yeah. You should probably hang out with Schwartz more often because he likes the fireball. In a plastic bottle? Mm-hmm. So we're going to start out with topics uh, about concerts. We got some feedback from people from social media and stuff, but uh, where do we want to start? We want to start with the best concert you ever went to, or do you just have a, a rant about hairball that you want to get out of your system? Or <laughs> I think we just, I mean, in the interest of time, we give Danny two minutes to go on hairball and like, that's it. No or more do we skip hairball and all the hagfish and all of the, you know. The stories that we've done in the past. <laughs> That's true. We could do that too. Just... <laughs> All right, Jimmy, you got one minute with hairball. Go for it. All right. All right. All right. So why the fuck did we go to that show? <laughs> <laughs> uh, hold on. Wow, he's really really cut to the cut to the point here. <laughs> Putting the stopwatch start. Hair, hairball hairball is just like it's sure they're they're like guys that like do stuff. Uh-huh. <laughs> and do it well. But what's the point? To entertain. <laughs> What, what don't you get here? <laughs> Enter, entertain people that are stuck in the 80s. Some acid yeah, wash jeans. All right. I, 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 will, I, will reverse, I, will, I will reverse my opinion right here. Hairball is a fine thing. It, it, is a, it is a niche market that there are people that would love to go see that. And, and it's great. Like most of them are your friends. It disgusts me. <laughs> <laughs> what? That's a, at, that's at a cool. core level. <laughs> at a core level. At a core level. It disgusts me. Yeah, 10 like, seconds. But uh, but it is a, it is a thing that happens in this world, and uh, you know, okay, you're not gonna go to uh, TC Summer Jam and and 
Hey, we're at time. We're done. Yeah. <laughs> Over. I will not mention Hairball ever again. Is there a is there a it's not true, but you know. Is there a cover band that you would go see for a particular band? Like Arch Allies. They're more like the Styx Ario Speedwagon. <laughs> so Me I for- tried I tried really hard uh talking of our podcast name, but back when I did No Time for TV, when I was booking bands for those shows, there was a in Minneapolis, there was a U2 cover band uh, that covered U2, but they also dressed like U2. And I tried to book them yeah. so hard. Really? And they just called themselves U2. Like, they didn't even try to disguise the fact that, like, they were a cover well, band. They didn't cover at all. And uh, they just called themselves U2. And and uh, they never took me seriously, somehow. Like, I was like, well, I do a show that no one comes to on Sunday nights at a bar. In, in Cedar Riverside, and I can't pay you, but will you come? Will you come play one of my shows? And they never responded. Interesting. Well, I think you won there because I mean, obviously they're not going to be that good if they're not creative with them. You know, had they gone with like Angels of Harlem, cool. I get it. These guys are awesome and they're creative. Or Joshua Tree, funny, but no. In a, in a strangely, that, strangely yeah. related story to one of the guys that used to come down uh, to see every episode of No Time for TV. When it was at the 400, uh, wanted to change his name. His name was Andy. He wanted to be called Edge, based <laughs> off of, from U2's The Edge. Uh-huh. But U2's was The Edge. He just wanted to be called Edge. He didn't want the 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 in front. He just wanted to be called Edge. And he came to every show. I don't know. A weird coincidence. Neither here nor there. But I remember when uh, Pete wanted to be called the Burke. It was just Burke. <laughs> Not the Burke. It wasn't a want. It was just what the law dictated <laughs> at that point. <laughs> awesome. uh, Good well, times. Well, uh, concert was, I guess I'd be curious about your first ones. I think my first concert, I'm going to kind of exclude the really first one because it was a concert after Minnesota Strikers game. Oh, yeah. I saw the suburbs they played. Nice. That's pretty. I, I didn't know anything about them because I was, you know, like seven. I was a little bit more into, you know, Led Zeppelin back then. Um, uh, and- I, think, I think you meant kids, new kids on the block. Yeah, and KOTB. I thought that was your first choice. I think they were a thing in like 84, 85. But the, the very first concert I went to, and I've also seen this gentleman twice since, was uh, Neil Diamond. Wow. Yes. I you, saw were, Diamond. you were old even back then. Yeah, I, my grandmother loved him and my mom loved him. And we went and I think my sister. And Neil brought down the house. And the times I saw him since then... He also brought down the house. Holly Holy is one of the top 10 songs I've seen live. I'm standing by that statement, even at my tender age of 45. Did wow. you go, Pete? Were you there when, when I took my mom? Mm-hmm. That was there? one of the other times. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Remember when he played Forever in Blue Jeans? <laughs> and then he got done with it, and the crowd went nuts. And he's like, he's like oh, do you, want to, do you guys want to hear that again? <laughs> <laughs> he played Forever in Blue Jeans a second time. Yeah. And the crowd went even more nuts. And he goes, do you want to hear that a third time. <laughs> Neil Diamond played Forever in Blue Jeans three <laughs> times in a row, and the crowd loved it. The man could play the crowd. So, like, the <laughs> last time I saw him was uh, with my mom and my wife and, I think, my sister at uh, Excel. <laughs> and Neil's, like, he's just taking a break, talking to the crowd. You know, band members are probably resting, grabbing drinks. And he talks, he kissed a woman's hand at the very end of the song, right in the crowd. And he, um, he was telling a story about how his wife his new wife at the time. I don't know if he was still married to her or whatever. <laughs> she said, Neil, you can kiss all the hands you want, but if you ever do more than that, I'm going to cut your balls off. <laughs> His words, like Neil's words, that's heavily, par- not even heavily paraphrased. That was pretty, pretty tight paraphrase. And I'm like, all right, Neil can, uh, Neil's got a little, a little uh, humor to him too. I appreciated that. Man put on a show. That's all I'm saying. Yeah, no, he did. What year was this about? Last time I saw him, I mean, it was no more than was maybe eight years ago that I, that I saw him last, last, I bet, thereabouts. First time, like I said, was probably 89, 90, it's probably really 90. Crazy. Mm-hmm. When, when did we see him with my mom, Peter? That that would have been... Oh, gosh. I don't, think we could drink. I don't think we could drink legally. I think we live in the dorms, so that would have been like 96. Oh, yeah, it was. Yeah, because it was early. Yeah, Are, it might have you legally like, drinking in the dorms? Well, we couldn't drink at the concert. Ah. Jeremy's mom was kind of a stick in the mud. She wouldn't buy us booze. <laughs> so <laughs> she wouldn't feed us alcohol. <laughs> hey, Ma, she's going to listen to us eventually. So. <laughs> I know. Good job, Mom. <laughs> <laughs> Abiding the law, I guess. How about you guys? Do you remember your first concert? Yeah, I'm trying to think back. Um, like 
I saw bands and stuff in high school, like local, like high school bands and things like that. I'm trying to remember my very first concert, though. Like it had to have been in college, like actually pay for something and going probably in college. But I no recollection of what it was anymore. Wow, so late in life for you. Kind of surprised. Yeah, like my parents listened to different, like my mom was into Lionel Richie and Barry Manilow. And so like that wasn't something I was going to go see in concert. My, yeah, dad, I mean- was, my dad was into <laughs> classic <laughs> Classic rock and like old school country, like Willie Nelson and um, the Men in Black, the Man in Black, and you know Hank Williams. So I know I know the words to all those fucking songs for riding around in the truck with them to like bowling and basketball and stuff. But that was not something I was going to go see in person. Um, and so my musical taste just diverted from kind of all that. Oh, you bruiser! I know you went to a lot in high school, didn't you? For like a high school kid, you I remember you actually going. Yeah, we went to uh, Aaron Campbell and I went to a lot of stuff. But uh, our first, my first was with Aaron Campbell. It was Fourth uh, of July '94. Uh, it was Soul Asylum and um, uh, what's her name? Uh, Gin Blossom. Okay. <laughs> Gin Blossoms. It was Float Right Park out in Wisconsin. We drove out there because I remember we drove back and I know it's Fourth of July because we drove back into town and watched the the fireworks sure. in, in town after we got back from the concert. Um, and, and weirdly enough, at that years later, when I worked at the Foreigner Bar, when I talked to Bill Sullivan, who was the manager, one of the owners of the Foreigner, and he was the manager of Solo Sound at the time, he was at that show. So oh, crazy. Um, but yeah, no, that's and I bought a shirt. I still have that shirt uh, from that Solo Sound show. Um, I think I'm I'm putting together a, a uh, I, I've started to uh, reconnect with uh, my ex Sarah with her do- her oldest daughter Edith. She's getting into music now. She's almost 14. Um, she'll be 14 this year. And she's getting into music. And so I'm putting together a, a gift package of t-shirts for her. And I put that Soul Asylum shirt nice. in that gift package. Um, I put an old Weezer shirt and uh, a Cloud Cult shirt and some other old albums and music stuff. You know, didn't just... want to be a Goldfinger sweatshirt, did you? No, <laughs> no, no I, wouldn't, I, would, I wouldn't give that up. All right, just making sure. And he's still wearing that one. Come on, guys. Yeah, I still wear it. I still wear it once a week, usually. <laughs> Sweet. And you know, now that I think about it, probably one of my first concerts was probably one of those like festival things out at Fort Wright Park. Like I'm sure I went with Langer and Brian Miller to something like, but it wasn't specifically for like a band. It was just to go and hang out at a concert, you know, yeah. from one of those big festivals or, you know, like at the U they have summer jam or spring jam or whatever it was. Those are probably, you know, some of my first ones, but it wasn't specifically for anyone in particular that I can remember. You go to see someone, you just went to a show. Yeah. Like, you know, also like, the suburbs there was like the myth is now in maplewood but there was nothing nothing out there back in the day so you had to go to say yeah, minneapolis you had to you know get it get into town to go see anything back then you know i saw hairball at um bogart's down here in apple valley so that's not always true you can see some really good band at small suburb venues if you you're just, you just want to push you just want to push <laughs> I just, I'm stating facts, buddy. Was this, was this after the first time you saw them at the Myth? Oh, it was, the first time I saw them was actually at the uh, at Bogarts. At Bogarts. Wow. So you my, you my previewed it and then you tortured Jeremy. Oh, dude, this like, is you what he was getting into. I bet it was 20 years ago when I saw him there. It was a long time ago. I saw them with my my cousin. He was a fan. Is it still the same lineup, or did they have changed people over time? I think that was when Chainsaw was in there. I think he was an original member. I just want to point out. So, like, I saw, I saw a show. Oh, where'd you see it at? Oh, I saw it at Bogarts. <laughs> that's that's your that's your that's your that's that's alarm bell one right there. When the venue has a bowling alley, that's an alarm bell. Yeah, but it's on the other half of the building. Okay, no, that's not true. No, it is. <laughs> I'm trying to remember. I haven't been to Bogarts forever. You're trying to say it's an event center. It's got multiple things. I got gotcha. you. <laughs> I'm kind of regretting bringing up hair. <laughs> it's like it's like it's like we're in a Law and Order episode, and you know, like yeah, you know, you get the witness to like reveal the thing you want, so you can go in and for the kill. Yeah. <laughs> you just lost our German audience, but <laughs> I'm sorry, Hesse. <laughs> <laughs> People aren't going to know that they didn't. They weren't in the green room. <laughs> he didn't say it right either. So that doesn't help. But he did say it for Cinco de Mayo. I say that's true. So had some flair there. <laughs> where, where is the best concert venue that you've been to? Like most interesting venue? Can you think of a place? I think First Ave, I think First Ave's a good venue. Yeah, oh, I've yeah. been to a ton of different venues, but I like I like First Ave. I thought it was pretty. 
pretty good. Have you been to the Armory yet at all? They've been playing more concerts there. That's true. Yeah, I've been there two for two shows. That was actually really cool. They they I thought I think they've done a really good job. That might be my like my preferred between them, but you know, first half is also just iconic. Yeah, but yeah, you can get a little sweaty in there. Yeah, I don't think they believe in air conditioning or anything like that, or you know, um, cleaning, right. um, disinfecting. <laughs> yeah, the the Paramount in St. Paul, which is a First Ave subsidiary, Paramount in St. Paul is pretty is pretty good too. I've seen a couple shows there. Um, is that a good one? It looks like it might be interesting. I I, I missed a, a big show I wanted to see there a couple of years ago. Yeah, haven't looked at a show since there. Yeah, I mean, I I saw a show there earlier this year and in. in uh, uh, had a minor panic attack and then and, and might have passed out as i was trying to leave the room you know but and then i <laughs> you're, because you were doing some sweet crowd surfing yeah it was really dope but it was a cool room no but i just i just i had a panic attack and i tried to get out and i passed out but the staff i actually got dragged out of the room by the staff and woke up in the hallway out back uh and they were they were very they were very gracious and uh very nice and uh when I proved to them I could stand up on my own again and, and I was okay, <laughs> they, let, <laughs> they let me go. <laughs> Didn't it work you over or take your money or anything? No, no, no. They were very, they, they were super worried that I would be angry or whatever. And I was like, no, no, no. I just, this is me being me. Um, but it was a good, it was a good room. It was a cool room. Yeah. And uh, there's a lot of seating and there's a cool like area in front where there's standing room for people dancing and stuff like it's in the stage is nice like it's i would recommend the paramount i would highly recommend the paramount especially like i said for the way i was treated for being a weirdo who passed out uh they treated me pretty fucking well and you're gonna hear the music in a you know smaller place like that too yeah, yeah. Pro- i've seen shows at like u.s bank stadium and whatever and yeah give me the armory or first to have every day yeah i happen to agree with that too yeah so since you passed out do you prefer to in general and then you also mentioned seating do you prefer to sit or stand during a concert me oh, both. i i don't i i prefer not to go to concerts anymore but uh I, if i was going to go i would sit i would rather sit yeah how do you sit if you're listening to like hairball or <laughs> how can you stay in your chair how do you yeah how are you not on your feet all times clapping? Well, I mean, the problem with hairball, I mean, if I was going to sit during hairball is like, how do I, how do I quickly get to the bathroom to vomit? <laughs> well, maybe don't drink so much, but um, <laughs> they also did, they also didn't provide any chairs at the myth. So you had to stand, you had no choice. Oh, you were standing anyway. Yeah. The myth is a weird place. I, I do, I do, I do enjoy going to see hairball just for being at the myth because i wanted to know what that venue was like it was a crazy place yeah it's kind of, i mean it's kind of structured like first stab a little bit right just like the, the big yeah no i mean it's it's structured just fine it just was yeah. it was huge like that was i think that was more of my shock by it it was it was just so big yeah i'm trying to remember what it was before like it was something and then they converted it to... it was a shoe store it was, was a dsw <laughs> shoe store yeah, it was something. It was something there. I always think it was one of. Oh, no, I'm not. I'm not kidding. It was a DSW shoe store before it was Myth. Damn. I no, I knew it. it was something. I didn't. I couldn't remember what it was. But that's because that was the area of the mall that we would go to in high school. Like we were over North St. Paul, Woodbury area. So Maplewood Mall was the closest thing. To. So we were over in that area quite a bit. I just couldn't remember what that was prior to being there. Well, maybe I'm just saying. I'm sure there's some store that's going to conk out down in, you know, Burnsville or something like that. Maybe we put in an, a club. Yeah, it would probably be Bogart. <laughs> <laughs> I am not interested. You're not interested in owning Bogarts? No. It bishops? You, you know, on a slow night, you can bowl. <laughs> <laughs> get, lower that handicap, get that average up. Yeah, bowl of 299. Sorry. Wish you were, you know, dead. <laughs> I've, bowled, I've bowled at least a 123 before. Wow, what'd you do with the last five frames? <laughs> he took them off. He's like, that was enough. That was I'm good. I'm good. This is as hard this is as high as I want to go. I peaked. I don't want to I don't want to show off in front of people. That's true. Yeah, no, I just I got her I got her ball the last five rounds when I got 123. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> and he was just staring at the rest of the people we was with. He's like, Yes, I am gutter balling this. <laughs> that absolutely sounds like something you would do, dude. <laughs> You're on pace for like a 200 game, and you're like, "Nope, I'm gonna gutter all five of these frames." Yeah, I'm done. I'm done. You can't make me get a 200. I'm not going to. I will not I'm playing by your rules. I will not do my best. <laughs> I will not maximize my potential. Oh, uh, potential. What was the? Uh, I am kind of curious, and one always comes to mind for me. But what's the your biggest regret? Like where somebody was in town or 
whatever, and you decided not to not to see them. Oh, people I wish I would have saw. But like that realistically, like, oh man. Yeah. Opportunity and you just chose not to or and you got somebody in mind? I for me, yes. Let me think about it. I got mine. Go for it. Uh Leonard Cohen, last time he came to town, it was a sixty-five dollar ticket. And I was like, well, I, that seems like a lot of money. It was when I was still in Minneapolis. It was before I came to Northfield. And uh, I was like, I don't know. I, 65 is like, that's, that's a lot of money. And uh, he ended up playing a three and a half hour show where he literally played like his entire catalog. His entire catalog. And uh, and then he's now passed away. So like, there's never a chance to see him again. And it's like, damn it. I sh- that would have been worth seeing. Like, fucking, I love Leonard. And uh and the other, you know, the other one, Tom Petty. I wish I would have seen Tom Petty in my lifetime. That would have been great. But you know, I threw here quite a bit too, and I never got to. I never went and see it to see him either. I probably would, that's probably a pretty big regret. For me. Yeah, yeah, that would have been a good one for sure. How about you, old man? You got one? Yeah, you you guys went like I haven't seen me first in the Gimme Gimmies live that I can remember. Like unless they were opening for somebody, and I just don't remember it. Um, but when you guys went, I think a couple like a year ago or two years ago. I think it was like last summer. Yeah. Yeah, I just wasn't feeling comfortable enough to go out at that time, and so I probably I regret not going to that at this point. But now, yeah, that, was, I, now was, that I've had COVID and all that sort of stuff at this point, it was uh, kind of a triple whammy too because it was Floggy Molly and uh, the Violent Femmes who absolutely destroyed. Yeah, I've seen both those bands before, but it, it would have been yeah. fun to see them again. I saw Floggy Molly at um, First Ave with uh, Dropkick Murphys one time. Okay. With my brother. And then uh, I saw Violent Femmes years and years ago. I can't yeah. remember. I would like, I they're, coming, like they're coming to town soon. soon. They're coming to town soon. I can't remember where, though. Oh, really? I would I would go again. Like, that's how much I enjoyed. Because last time I saw was a dumb college kid. and Yeah, maybe it was at the Fis- Fitzgerald in St. Paul. I have to look. I can't remember. I just saw an ad in Facebook. I'd be curious to see who they're with, yeah. They slayed. Who do you wish you went and saw, Peter? Oh, it was absolutely. So this is, I don't know how many years ago, probably. I'm trying to think when Chris Cornell died. Was that like five years ago now? Yeah. Four years? Four, so a year and a half or two years before he died. I was driving in the car, <clears throat> and I heard something about, oh, and Soundgarden's playing tonight at, uh, what's that, the the movie theater concert place on in Dinkytown? Oh. Um, you know what I'm talking about? That oh, the theater. Yeah. Yeah, uh, whatever the theater's called, whatever I can't remember what it's called. Yeah, for the live me, I can't remember it, but they were playing there. Oddly enough, varsity, the varsity. Yeah, thank yeah. you. Yes, the varsity. And I've always wanted to to see them, and I said, "Oh, I'll have plenty of opportunities." Right? Wow, I did not. And then soon after that, I think within a year of that is when they. This is a little bit more out there, but um, they did the uh, tour for um, hair, uh, not hair the dog, temple. <laughs> the dog but the closest they were was like philly and i'm like well oh yeah i remember you looking at those concerts yeah and i'm like oh man that would be awesome and they, they never toured like they actually i don't think they ever toured as temple the dog back in the, the 90s no they didn't it just did the album and so this is literally like the one and only tour for temple the dog and i just it, i didn't it was a handful of shows too right it was like it was i don't even know if it's more than like 10 yeah. Yep. Like East Coast, West Coast. I don't think there's anything close to us. It's all coast. That was the, I mean, but that was a little bit more like a, of a commitment. It wasn't like a local thing. But in retrospect, that would have been amazing. I just spent the money because I never would have forgotten seeing, seeing that show. Soundgarden Pearl Jam together, basically. Yeah, ever. Like I never would have forgotten that. So, yeah, that would have been, that would have been cool. Yeah. Yeah. Soundgarden was my brother's favorite band in the 90s. So, I'm I'm sure he's, he saw them live at some, and then other than that was Bad Room, and I saw him a couple times at different. Yeah, I remember uh, wherever the the um, Saints used to play, the old CH. Oh, the old uh, Midway Stadium, yeah. Stadium, yeah. I remember we saw them there with like Blink One Eighty Two, and yeah, that was great. That was a great show because you could tell the Bad <laughs> Religion fans versus the Blink One Eighty Two fans because the Blink One Eighty Two fans were all like jock dudes who were like tan and buff with like visors backwards and weren't wearing all black. And when yeah, yeah, and the bad religion people were all like, yeah, pale as shit, like afraid of the sun in all black, black oh, shirts, shit. black jeans, black jean shorts. Yeah. It was such an obvious like distinction between the two. Not to mention the twenty year age difference. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, that was, that was a good one too. But they tore that place down too. Midway's not there anymore. Midway's gone. Yeah, they put a factory or they put a warehouse thing over there. So yeah, well, a warehouse seems to be cool. <laughs> so 
Yeah, we need warmer warehouses. Yeah. <laughs> no, that was a, yeah, I don't know. I don't know if there's anybody else that's currently out that I need to see. When GNR came here five, six years ago, I kind of did that. Well, I'm, I'm F it, I'm going. And I literally, I think I bought two, two like floor tickets and I'm like, I'll just find somebody. Somebody to go with you. Right. And I did, like Langer said he would go and actually pay for the tickets. I'm like, well, I don't care if you can go, you know, if you can pay for the ticket, just come with me, somebody. Sure. It was, I was so glad I did it. That was, you know, I never saw them back in the day and they absolutely slayed for three hours. It was amazing. So uh, for years, I didn't go to concerts. I just kind of got, not that I went to a ton back in the day, but the the novelty of them kind of wore off, the concept. And now it's, it's back. Like I, you know, I can't go to a concert every week, but I like to go a couple times a year to something that's really in my wheelhouse. And I'm not, you know, I like to buy decent tickets for it. Actually really enjoy it. Not go GA and stand the entire time? Is that what you're telling me? Well, I don't want to sit like upper deck if it's at a yeah. arena, right? I, I want to be with a sound call to be good where I can get pretty close to the you know, performers, for lack of a better term, and actually see them. Like, it's not the same if they're like an inch tall. Yeah. And not be in the pit. And also not get ravaged in the pit. Yeah. There's that. There's that. I don't want to hurt anybody. <laughs> that was a problem back in the day, Peter. You would just hulk out. Yep. Yep. I'd have to run before the cops got there. I remember, I remember that happening quite often. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> At the back wall, first Ave, like, can you see what's going on up there? Uh, there's no time for last requests. Ain't nobody got time for that. Look, Betty, I've got no time for games today. Now, now there's no time for a bench test. Heat them up. Love is always with 